this is James and I'm back in the shop again. Today we're going to do a project and some of you might wonder why I'm doing a project instead of continuing to set up my shop and I've decided that doing a project will help me determine where things should be as opposed to where they are. Um, I would rather slowly work the shop into its organization and, and where the placement of things are as I work on projects to define where things should be um, rather than set everything up and then discover that I need to rearrange or uh, just rethink the whole thing through. Um, besides the fact that I've been promising a few projects uh, uh, along the way and I need to get a few of those taken care of. Um, so today's project is going to be something that uh, as grandparents we probably need for quite a while. My wife has always brought the grandkids into the kitchen and had them help with the preparation of food at the counter and they've stood on chairs and it's just been a very unsafe kind of thing. So today we're going to make uh, the, a kitty tower to help them at the counter be safe and to also participate. Um, and I'm going to show you a little video of the finished product and then we're going to get right into uh, building the kitty tower. Hi. So this is how it works. My grandson's second try. And now, yeah. See you in a second. And now he can work on stuff with mommy on the counter. Can you get this one? So, like I said, we're going to be making two of these children's stools. And this is the wood I just brought back from Home Depot there. I'm going to be making two, so I have uh, eight pieces of eight foot one by six. Dog is whining at me. Um, and as you can see, I don't know if you can tell, none of them are perfectly straight. I picked the ones that had the fewest amount of defects and knots in them. So we're going to need four pieces that are roughly 40 inches long, maybe 38 inches long. So as you decide which of these pieces you're going to be using, pick the straightest ones, like this one, and this will be the one that we cut the vertical, uh, four vertical pieces. They're two by, uh, one by two, about 38 inches long. So we're going to get set up, so we're going to sort the pieces as to how straight and flat they are, and uh, most of the shorter pieces it won't matter if there's a slight twist in the entire board. We'll, we'll straighten those out as we get to that. So let's get started. Okay, so we're going to make four pieces that are 38 inches long, two inches wide. I could have bought one by twos, but the stock they had there was all twisted and terrible. I was going to get uh, one by eights so I could get three one by twos out of it but the knots and the defects were too strong. The one by sixes were the, the best pieces they had. So I'll have a little waste that I'll use for other projects, but um, I'm gonna make uh, one by twos out of this stock. So we'll cut a square edge and then cut uh, two pieces, 38 inches.
got all of our stock cross cut and we're going to start ripping them to the proper thicknesses. Most of them are going to be two inches. Several boards are three inches and we'll go from here. So I needed to have a curved arch that I'm going to cut and I don't have any compasses so I quickly clamped together two pieces of wood and clamped a, a pencil, found the center point, found the center point on my bench and just adjusted it to where it went from one corner to the other and then just drew this line. Um, so I'll be cutting this out on the bandsaw and using this, sand it a little bit, and then using that as a template to, uh, to cut the actual arches. got this arch template cut out which is exactly 15 inches wide and I'm going to mark this as the top in case there's any irregularities since I was sanding on it and what we really want is an arch that is at least two and a half inches thick so I'm going to measure up two and a half inches on each side the other arch in there right about like that and then cut this out on the bandsaw and we will need two of these uh, for each stool I tried to stay just outside the pencil line to leave a little room for sanding. So I'll cut the other one. Okay, so I, I don't have a disc sander or, or anything close. So what I've been doing is I, I sand a little bit of a piece of wood away um, so that I can get a, a, a piece of wood flush up against this drum sander. and. Uh, this seems to work pretty well. I can just sand these edges like this. Just fine. So we make these frames in two pieces, uh, each side, and uh, then there'll be side connecting pieces. But the two frames, you put the arch at the top, then there's a ladder that the child can climb through, and the tops of these ladders will be at 19, 15, uh, 11, and 7 inches. So we're going to do joinery on all of these rungs of their ladder and use the same joinery up at the top. I have not yet decided how I want to do it. I, I didn't want to take the time to do mortise and tenon um, or dowels. I'm thinking I may glue 
and, and screw and recess a screw into each side. But I will be back to uh, let you know how we do that. Okay, so what I've decided to do uh, to make things quick and easy is I'm going to measure down an inch, drill a hole and countersink for a three inch screw and then clamp and glue and screw each rung in the arch to each side frame and once the glue sets up that should make a terrific joint. So we'll do that over at the drill press. So I've set up the drill press just to be able to drill a hole all the way through these pieces and each one is indexed where the hole goes so we'll start there. slightly countersink them at the little drill press. So now we're ready to glue and screw it together. And what I'm going to do is clamp this to the table, clamp this in place, run the screw in with a framing square next to it to make sure it will stay square and that should work fine. So we'll start with this and this. And I'm certain, I'm sure that you can think of better ways to do this, but my shop is not completely set up yet and this is going to be the fastest and easiest way for me to accomplish this. And I'm going to I'll clean up all the squeezed out glue after it dries and it's going to need a good sanding anyway. And then we're going to shoot it with kid safe paint uh, in the spray booth. Well, now let's get the arch put on. Then we'll flip it around and look at the other side. Okay, we've made the two frames and now what we need to do is make a platform that the child's going to stand on that will be adjustable and fit inside the run, rungs of that little ladder we built in there. So we're using those 18 inch pieces and we're going to 
make a 14 and 7 eighths inch wide platform and we're going to use the remaining two 15 inch pieces to glue up these pieces together and also to provide stability these will come inside the rungs of the uh, of the ladder on the two sides. So, um, what we need is 14 and 7 eighths, and these pieces will are just come to 11. So we need to make we need to rip this piece 4 and 7 eighths, and we'll put it in the middle, and then glue and nail all this together. Okay, so I ripped the center piece to. I think I said before four and seven eighths, but that plus eleven would be fifth would be too big. It's three and seven eighths, and that gives us a fourteen and seven eighths inch platform, and that will fit between the fifteen inch rungs. So it will be adjustable depending on where they want to put it. Um, also, we're going to make this um, using hinges. We're going to make this whole thing collapsible. So that it would fit under a bed or between the fridge and the sink or whatever. Um, so we'll get to the hinges part in a minute. But because this platform is going to sit between these, it's going to sit between these rungs, and the stretchers we're using are 16 and uh, 16 and a half. That's why the platform is 18 inches wide. So there'll be a three-quarter overhang that matches the thickness of the uh, uh, wood. So. Um, let's glue this up. We're going to use a framing square to hold it. So we'll just put a little bit of glue on each edge. Not too much because we're going to nail a support for it. Um, you'll see in a minute. So we have that one and we have this one. And then using the framing square, we will make sure they all line up and they'll be perfectly square. And we'll throw a clamp on it for a few minutes while we take the measurements of everything else. Mm. There we go. So it's in the framing square, it's perfectly square. We'll just snug this up a little bit. And then we want to measure not just three quarter from the edge, but uh, 13 sixteenths. Uh, we'll get it back just enough so everything will fit and it won't be too snug. So we'll measure back 13 sixteenths from the edge and 13 sixteenths from the other edge. pieces and line them up and we'll shoot those in with inch and a quarter inch brads.
I should have mentioned to make sure that you like, you, you put the good sides of the wood down before you do that, just to make sure you get the best sides uh, that can be seen. Later, we're gonna put a hole in that you could put a finger in to pull this out, um, just to make it a little bit easier, maybe two. Um, so now we're gonna describe how we're gonna put the hinges in and uh, then we're gonna do some sanding and uh, get it ready for finish. So all of these side connecting pieces are 16 and a half inches wide. Um, and what we're gonna do to make it collapsible is we're gonna put a hinge on each of these connecting pieces. We're gonna put two in the middle and one on the end. And those will be on the inside. And then on this side, we're gonna put them on the outside so that this can bend this way and the whole thing will collapse oh to a very uh, maybe four inches high uh, I haven't talked about the the bottom piece we're putting on to keep it from tipping over yet I'll get to that but uh, before I do the hinges I'm going to do some sanding and uh, get this ready to be finished and we'll be back for the assembly Okay, lastly what we're going to do is take that 24 inch piece and we're going to mark, uh, I hope you can see that, we're going to mark a circle on it. I, what I did is I just, I just used a paint can and drew a circle. And we're going to do that on both sides and then we're going to mount these to the bottom two and a half inches from each side, or so two and a half inches from each side shows. And this is just an extra tipping uh, preventer. Um, when the child climbs up, they'll be working out of that side, and this will keep it from tipping forward or back. Um, if you have a real rambunctious child, you could put another three or four inch piece on the sides to keep it from tipping sideways, but that doesn't seem to be a problem. So we drew these circles. I'm going to cut them on the bandsaw and sand them down, and then glue and nail them onto the bottom. So with those cut out, you should decide which of these faces you want people to see easiest facing out. These are going to be painted, so I, it doesn't really much matter. Um, so I'm going to use these sides as the front sides. Um, so I'm going to flip them over, put a piece under here, and put these at the bottom, and then mark where they're going to be and I think I said two and a half inches so they're going to be right about there yep so I'll just put a quick pencil mark here get some glue and we will glue and nail these on using uh, inch and a quarter brads and you want to of course keep them flush at the bottom We're just going to sand them all up and get them ready for finish. So I decided after some sanding that I was going to uh, put this 1 8 round over bit in and just go around all the edges and uh, finish it up before the final sanding.
Okay, so as you can probably see by all the mess in my shop, uh, I've got all the pieces, uh, the edges rounded over and all the pieces sanded. So what's left now is to set up the pieces in the spray booth and put a coat of primer on them. So we'll set that up now. Okay, so here in the spray booth, I've set up all the individual pieces on these uh, uh, turntables here. I've blown them all off with compressed air and uh, we're ready to shoot just one coat of primer onto these and then we'll flip them over and do the other side and then we'll get the frames in here and do the same thing. So let's get started with that. Okay, well I'm not going to take a lot of video in here. Um, I don't want a lot of overspray getting out anywhere near the camera, but I'm going to turn on the exhaust fan up there and uh, take a few seconds of us spraying the, the pieces. the hinges and see how it folds up so we'll get started with that okay so like you saw before there's going to be three pieces on each side um, that are the supports for the uh, or that tie the whole unit together and what I'm going to do is put a hinge on this one two hinges on this one and one hinge up at the top on the top piece. Now, if we do these on the inside, that means that the opposite side has to be on the outside so that it will fold down and collapse. So I'm going to use a, a little scriber to uh, mark the center points of the hinges. Um, I'm using two and a half inch hinges. Um, you can't be too safe when there's kids involved as far as I'm concerned. So. Um, uh, I'll be back and do some uh, mid videos in the middle of this, but uh, I'm going to get started. So, I got the first set of hinges on that side of the first frame. Um, everything looks like it'll fold at a 90 degree angle, which is really good. Um, whoops. Um, so now on this side, we'll mount the same size pieces, but this time we'll put the hinge out here on the outside like that so that this piece folds that way as well so I'll be back when that's done alright so I got the hinges on one side and now comes the challenge the hinges are on um, the hinges are on this outside over here and of course they're on the inside over there so um, the challenge now becomes how to attach them on the other side while keeping everything square and plumb so I'm gonna use a few clamps like I have back there uh, get it all square and clamped and then I should be able to locate where the hinges go and put those hinges on and hopefully the platform that goes in the bottom will fit square and hopefully it will be plumb. So I'm going to wrestle with it right now. Well here it is with the hinges on and so this is collapsed so it will fit under a bed. It folds up this way and then when you stand it up Take the platform and you insert it in any of the rungs that the 
child uh, needs to get to the proper counter height. And that's what keeps it strong and square. So they can climb up the ladder, climb in, and then work over the side at the, at the counter. So I'll take a video of my grandson when we deliver this, and uh, that would finish up the, uh, the video for this project. So thank you for watching this video. Thank you for uh, all your support and all your wonderful comments. I hope you make one of these uh, for your own kids or grandchildren. It's a safe alternative to uh, anything else you could do if, if you want your kids to help you. Um, my job now is because the kids visit all the time, I have to make another one. So I'm going to make another one now and come back for another video and uh, another project or another shop organization video. Again, thank you for everything. Uh, please subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Hey. Hold on, Niven. You're going to be in a video. Soon she's going to be there. Soon they're going to be there. Uh-oh, i got to make two more. <laughs> Bye for now. This is James and I'm back in the shop again. Today we're going to do a project and some of you might wonder why I'm doing a project instead of continuing to set up my shop and I've decided that doing a project will help me determine where things should be as opposed to where they are. Um, I would rather slowly work the shop into its organization and, and where the placement of things are as I work on projects to define where things should be um, rather than set everything up and then discover that I need to rearrange or uh, just rethink the whole thing through. Um, besides the fact that I've been promising a few projects uh, uh, along the way and I need to get a few of those taken care of. Um, so today's project is going to be something that, uh, as grandparents, we probably need for quite a while. My wife has always brought the grandkids into the kitchen and had them help with the preparation of food at the counter. And they've stood on chairs and it's just been a very unsafe kind of thing. So today we're going to make uh, the, a kitty tower to help them at the counter be safe and to also participate um, and I'm going to show you a little video of the finished product, and then we're going to get right into uh, building the kitty tower. Hi, Papa. Hi. Good so, job. Keep going. this is how it works. My grandson's second try. And now, yeah. See you in a second. And now he can work on stuff with mommy on the counter. Can you get this one? So, like I said, we're going to be making two of these children's stools. And this is the wood I just brought back from Home Depot there. I'm going to be making two, so I have uh, eight pieces of eight foot one by six. Dog is whining at me. Um, and as you can see, I don't know if you can tell, none of them are perfectly straight. I picked the ones that have the fewest amount of defects and knots in them. So we're going to need four pieces that are roughly 40 inches long, maybe 38 inches long. So as you decide which of these pieces you're going to be using, pick the straightest ones, like this one, and this will be the one that we cut the vertical, uh, four vertical pieces. They're two by, uh, one by two about 38 inches long. So we're going to get set up. So we're going to sort the pieces as to how straight and flat they are. And uh, most of the shorter pieces 